Hello, Tar Heel Nation. Welcome to another episode of UNC Hoops Talk. I am your host, Dan DeWitt. This is the podcast where you hear everything uh, and anything, mostly everything, about the Tar Heel basketball team. And it keeps you up to date. And it is also the podcast for the fans by a fan. Like I said, I'm your host, Dan DeWitt. I am glad that you've uh, chosen to listen to this. And I hope you will join in the conversation with me, connecting on social media or through email or something with me uh, and giving your feedback and, and joining the conversation with me. Uh, my goal is to unite Tar Heel fans all across um, the country uh, or world, whatever it takes, uh, but just to unite Tar Heel fans uh, wherever we may be and uh, however passionate or closely tied to the program we may be. So uh, another week. Another couple of victories for the Tar Heels. They're rolling 6-0 and in the conference. Uh, again, the best start to a ACC season that Roy Williams has ever had as the head coach of North Carolina. And um, not clicking on all cylinders yet, but uh, getting the job done, getting those wins, and hopefully improving as we're going. Uh, definitely showing our depth as we go. That is that is definitely for sure. Uh, different guys stepping up, um, other guys struggling, other guys picking them up. Uh, it's it's definitely showing how deep we are and and how uh, explosive we can be if we can get it all going uh, at the right time and, and all together. So, uh, yeah, new week. Uh, State NC State comes into town or came into town on a Saturday. Uh, I did not get to see actually either of these games live. I did watch them both on DVR, uh, except for the problems that ESPN was having in the first half of the Wake Forest game. Um, but yeah, I watched both games. If if you've watched games on DVR, uh, well, maybe it's just me. I don't know. But uh, for me, when I watch them on on DVR, it's just not the same experience. I'm not quite into them as as much as a uh, normal game, but. Uh, I do I do like to watch them and just kind of see how we look and, and that kind of stuff that you don't necessarily get just reading about it or, or hearing about it. So uh, don't have quite the in-depth um, feel maybe because I didn't get to watch them live, kind of knew the score before I watched the games, kind of figured we'd win them both uh, as we should. Um, and so, yeah, not, not quite into it like I, I want to be, uh, but hopefully – that doesn't happen too many more times the rest of this season. So uh, NC State uh, depleted. They hung with us. You know, ugly kind of first half. Well, really ugly kind of game. Uh, we didn't shoot necessarily well. Uh, we never really got going offensively, clicking like we can. And, um, you know, tied 29 at halftime. Shows you how ugly it was right there. But, um, you know, they had to kind of slow it down. They only played seven guys, uh, which – you know, be what it is, it's their fault that they only have seven guys. Uh, for, to some extent, there's some injuries, but not like we haven't dealt with those as well. We're still plenty deep. But anyway, you know, they had to slow it down. They did a pretty good job. They stuck with us in the first half. Um, never really got it, you know, let it get out of hand for sure. Uh, but, yeah, we pull it out, 67-55 win. Um, three guys in double figures for us. Kind of the leader, Kennedy Meeks, 23 points, six rebounds. I believe this is his first game coming back, uh, starting. He played, obviously. We talked about that one. Uh, but first game back starting, shot 10 for 16, added three blocks um, in 30 minutes. So to see him play 30 minutes is great. He was limping a little bit towards the end of the game there at the end. Uh, but he came back, started against Wake, um, Played, I think, 14 minutes, 15 minutes against Wake Forest. So uh, at least it wasn't anything lingering to where he couldn't play after that. His knee is holding up. Good to see him get 30 minutes. Uh, you know, Bryce Johnson in foul trouble. Struggled again, six points. And uh, just really never got going. Which, again, people are going to say, well, he can't get it going with Kennedy clogging up the middle. Um, I don't I don't. I think, you know, if we get one of those two guys going every every game, Roy will stick with the one that's going. Um, obviously, it would be better to get them both going. That would be uh, the best scenario. Um, but I think we're okay if we get 
and I think we can win a national championship if, as long as one of those two guys is effective each night. Now, if they're both in foul trouble, both struggling, um, not to say we couldn't still, because I think Isaiah Hicks could step up, um, and our guards, you know, need to even step up more. But yeah, as long as we get one of those two guys going, I I'm good with that. Um, other um, other guys that played well against NC State, Joel Berry continues to shoot the ball uh, really well. He was three for five from the three point line, uh, five for nine overall. I ended up with 14 points, four assists, four rebounds. Uh, he did have three turnovers, but uh, played 32 minutes. And he has just been really shooting well lately. Uh, on the other hand, Marcus Page has not. He was one for nine in this game, 0 for 6 from the three-point line, ended up with just three points. He broke his streak of three-pointers in consecutive games, um, gave us three assists at the two turnovers, a couple of steals. Uh, he still is adding, you know, with his leadership, with his example, with his, you know, defense. Uh, but, again, we do need him to shoot better. Uh, as, as good as Mark or as Joel is shooting, uh, we need Marcus to not even be – you know, phenomenal, but we need him to knock down shots and and uh, really keep the defense honest, which I, I think he's going to. I don't think the defense is going to sag off to him to where, like, you know, dare him to shoot or anything like that because they don't want him to go, get going. But the threat needs to be real there. Um, and then the only other guy in double figures in this game was Isaiah Hicks, had 10 points, shot three for four – or three for five again, four for six from the free throw line, gave us six rebounds, half of them offensive. Um, in 18 minutes, Joel James was kind of, I don't know, he's, it's so crazy how he can go from starting uh, for, for Roy down to this game. He gave us five minutes with one foul is the only stat he has. So a um, little bizarre, not that I'm arguing with it. Again, we did not shoot well. We shot five for 20 for three. Um, we shot 63% for free throw, which is, you know, down for us this year. Maybe the past years that would be normal, but down for us this year, we shot 38% overall for the game. Not a pretty game. And, and again, like I said, I had to watch this on DVR uh, as we were traveling. It was happening like right after we landed, and I watched a couple of minutes on my phone, but it just wasn't doing it for me. Uh, so I watched it on DVR, and, and this was not a pretty game to watch, uh, especially when you knew we were going to win. You kind of knew the outcome uh, wasn't pretty. Uh, but we got the job done. We won, and, and I'm going to kind of leave it at that. Uh, you know, we got 21 offensive rebounds. We out-rebounded them one by one rebound, well, which isn't all that great. Uh, we only had nine, nine turnovers, and we forced 18 for them, uh, and that's pretty much what did it for us. Uh, that and just, you know, wearing them down. They had uh, a lot of people, you know, two guys foul out, uh, and they were, I think, both are big guys. And that's, you know, again, that's why Kennedy Meeks was able to be as successful as he was, as productive as he was, and, and that's pretty much won the game for us. Nothing too exciting uh, besides <coughs> it being, you know, Wake Forest and – or sorry, it being NC State and Roy had come out and said, we're going to be prepared and, you know, it's State and, uh, you know, we're going to take it to them, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then it not happening. Besides that – you know, not a whole lot to talk about. So I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, and then last night, uh, Wake Forest comes into the Dean Dome. And we pretty much took it to him right from the beginning, which is crazy that we only had one player in double figures. Uh, Bryce Johnson, 27 points, shot 8 for 12, 11 for 12 from the free throw line. Uh, just imagine that from where he was a couple of years ago. Uh, 11 rebounds, so we, I think it, they said it was his 10th double-double this season, and really only in 24 minutes because it was, you know, pretty much a blowout. We came out pretty strong. Um, there was a little bit of a streak towards the middle of the second half where they went on like an 8-10-0 to 10 run, but that only broke it, you know, brought it down to like 16-point lead for us. Uh, so, uh, yeah, pretty easy win there for us. Um, you know, besides Bryce Johnson, Kennedy Meeks, nine points, five rebounds. Justin Jackson uh, struggled a little bit shooting, four for 13. 
had eight points, six rebounds. Uh, Joel Berry, nine points, six rebounds. He did shoot two for three from the three-point line again. Um, Marcus really struggled again. He was one for eight, 0 for five. And I think they said at one point he was like one for 21 or two for 21 or something like that from the field. And at three, I mean, last two games for sure, he's 0 for 11 from the three-point line. So, again, we need him to get going, not necessarily to win in the regular season, not to win the next couple of games. But uh, if our aspirations are Final Four, National Championship, um, he's got to get out of this little slump that he's in. And, and I'm you know, confident that he will. Um, and then off the bench, we had uh, Nate Britt gave us six points, uh, Theo Pinson five points, Isaiah Hicks. It was nine points, nine rebounds. Um, Luke May gave us some good, you know, 15 minutes of six points and three rebounds. Uh, and besides that, the only other thing really is Joel James did not play in this game, but uh, he was not dressed either. And, and uh, again, if you will, tried to watch this game on TV, ESPN was horrible, missed, uh, mo- it was over half of the first half. And then even when they had the rest of the first half, it was, you know, bleeping with their technical difficulties or whatever. And so I don't even know why Joel James was out. So uh, someone please, you know, email, tweet at me, you know, whatever. I don't know what's wrong with him, how long he's going to be out or anything like that. I'm sure it says somewhere, uh, but I have not uh, looked and I do not know. So someone do the work for me. (laughs) Um, But no, let me know. Um, Again, not that we're going to be missing him all that much. I've told, you guys all season how I want those minutes to go to Isaiah Hicks and, and, and Ken Kennedy and playing his butt off and, and doing well for us. So again, nothing exciting here for this game. Um, we only had 14 assists to 10 turnovers, which isn't great. We had 15 steals, which is probably uh, the biggest thing. Uh, again, we only re- out rebounded by one 48 to 47, 18 offensive rebounds. Um, shot three for 18 from the three-point line again. So it's, it's almost like, you know, the last couple of seasons where we've struggled with from the three-point line is, is coming back right now to really be uh, a hindrance for us. Uh, we shot better from the free-throw line, a little bit better from the field. Uh, and, yeah, that's, that's about it. We had a 16-point lead at half. They actually, I guess, technically – uh, cut that back by one in the second half, but really this, you know, got up to a 20 point lead. I think that like 27 was the biggest lead we had and, you know, never really was all that close. So as it shouldn't have been, uh, Wake Forest is one and five in the ACC. Now we're six and oh, uh, and you know, we're sitting at the top of the ACC, which is, I guess, not, I guess it is what we expected. Um, but after that, the standings are a little bit more bizarre. We have, uh, looking at, you know, the standings right now, as of today is Thursday, the 21st of January, Louisville is in second at four and one in the conference. Clemson, who was second until their loss, uh, I think it was last night or the night before, is five and two. Um, And then Pitt, Notre Dame, Virginia Tech, Miami all have two losses there. Uh, and then we get to kind of the guys that we thought would be right behind us. Uh, Virginia is three and three. Duke is three and three in the conference. And um, yeah, I mean, I, it's great. I mean, we thought Duke was going to be the second best team and Virginia was going to be right in there to contend for the ACC, but uh, hasn't been the case so far. Duke, speaking of them, has lost three in a row. Uh, and not to mention three unranked opponents. So I think it's been since 2007 that they lost three games in a row. It's been since in the 60s. I don't remember what year exactly, 68, 69, something like that, uh, that they lost to three unranked opponents in a row. Um, So, you know, obviously we know what they've done in recent years, but uh, that's it's just crazy that they're doing that right now um, with the only guy they're missing is Emile Jefferson. Which, sure, you can say how important he is to them, but I mean, we've missed Marcus Page for six for six games. We missed Kennedy Meeks for what was it, six or seven games? Um, you know, that's two starters that we've missed, and we didn't lose three to unranked uh, and unranked teams. And the last two of their games have been at home that they lost. We still haven't lost a home game, 
Um, so to say that their Cameron Indoor Stadium or Hansborough Indoor Stadium is should be renamed uh, is the best environment and and all this junk that nobody can go in there and win and whatever they say about that high school gym they have. Um, it's just great. It's great to see. It's it's so much fun to see Duke where they are, and then it's even better, of course, when we're sitting at the top at six and zero. Oh. Uh, and uh, we should easily, knock on wood, should easily get to 8-0 before we're really challenged. Our next couple of games are Virginia Tech. It is in Blacksburg. Um, and, of course, you know, like I just said, they're at the top. Well, they're in the top half of where they were. Where did I see them now? There, yeah, 4-2. and two. They're in, you know, tied for that, what, third position with two losses. Uh, in the ACC, so you know they they have some confidence right now, but uh, there is no reason why we shouldn't be able to go in there and beat them. Uh, so that's coming up on Sunday, and then we have almost a whole week off to prepare for uh, the worst team in the ACC right now, Boston College, who sits at zero and five on the following Saturday, uh, and they actually come to Chapel Hill as well. So that should be. Uh, fun. Uh, but then after those two, which should be wins, we do go to Louisville on the 1st of February. And that you know should be a good game. If you remember last year, we had an 18-point lead in the second half in Louisville and ended up uh, blowing that, going to overtime, and actually losing to those guys. Uh, so that you know hopefully is a something Roy will bring up and the guys will use as fuel, and, and we'll be able to take down the Cardinals there. Uh, and then we got Notre Dame. So we got some tough teams. And then, you know, as Roy recently spoke about in a press conference is how backloaded our conference or our schedule is. You know, towards the end of the season, we got Duke. Uh, and then Miami is playing well. State is a rival game. Uh, not that we shouldn't beat them. Then we have Virginia, Syracuse again. Um, and then Duke, of course, is how we finish up the season. So – Definitely backloaded schedule, uh, but you know, hopefully by then we got all the kinks out and we're rolling and, and ready for the tournament and all that stuff, and uh, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, but yeah, that's uh, you know, as I was getting back to that school down the road, losing three in a row and two at home, uh, they have potential. I'm trying to remember who they play, I don't have their schedule in front of me. Um, but, you know, they have potential to lose more. I don't know if they have a timetable yet for when Emil Jefferson is going to be back. Um, and, and I'm not trying to downplay how important he is to the team. I know he's important. I mean, we, we've seen, you know, when we've missed key guys. Uh, but, again, it comes back to that depth. Um, Roy typically, you know, plays a lot more guys, especially early in the season, than what Kay does. Kay, you know, Coach Kay He's got his seven disciples, and, and he doesn't go down the bench uh, really at all. Uh, but, again, we don't want to talk about Duke too much. Um, you know, let them keep losing. Uh, we'll keep on rolling and winning. And, and it can be one of those great seasons uh, that uh, everybody, everybody in the country enjoys, where Duke loses in the first round of the NCAA tournament or something like that. Not making any predictions there. It's all about matchups. Um, but, you know, it is so great. Um, and, and I've seen Tar Heel fans put out the memes about Brandon Ingram and stuff. Like, you know, I don't necessarily blame him for going to Duke. Uh, and and – I don't think he's saying, oh, I should have gone to North Carolina right now or anything like that. Uh, the kid, you know, he's got to live with his decisions and, and you know, he's going to get an education. Hopefully he still graduates from Duke and stuff like that. But um, I don't know that he's turned out to be what everybody thought he would be. I don't think he's horrible. I don't think he's bad. Any of that just because he didn't come to North Carolina. Um, you know, it is what it is. And... You know, I don't know where I'm going with that, but uh, I, I don't like seeing the North Carolina fans saying now, like, "Oh, look at him; he's not any good," or "Oh, you know, he wishes that we came to North Carolina." And you know, that stuff's done. He didn't. You know, we're being successful right now. We're playing well. Um, Duke is struggling a little bit. That's sure we can rub it in. That's I have no problem with that. But um, you know, we don't know how things would have turned out. Uh, 
you got to wish kids well. I mean, these are, you know, 18 year old to 20 year old kids. Like there's no reason to, you know, bash them on and stuff like that. If they, if they make a dumb play or, you know, whatever, they have to get used to that. They're on national TV and, and all that. But um, yeah, like, again, I don't know where I'm going with that, but I just feel like I had to say that. And I feel like I'm rambling now. So um trying to think, look at my notes here. Um, I think that's all I had to say about this week's games, the upcoming games. Um, yeah, upcoming games. You know, we said Virginia Tech, Boston College. Probably next week's podcast is only on Virginia Tech. And hopefully it's a another happy one. Uh, because we won, uh, but just one game, not quite as exciting. Um, and, and then, yeah, Boston College, but then we'll get Louisville in the next one as, after that as well. Uh, so I think that's about all we need to talk about for this year's team. Uh, we did just get a recruit, and now his name is going to slip from my memory. Uh, I believe his last name is Black. But uh, 2008 class of 2018 point guard. Uh, 6'5 point guard as well. Some people projecting that he could be, you know, 6'7 or so by the time he comes to Carolina. Four-star guy. Um, of course, yeah, we're used to signing the five-star guys, the highly touted guys. A little bit early uh, for Roy, too. He doesn't always, you know, throw out those scholarships early. Um, but obviously, he's really been after the point guards as of late. And, you know, to get a big, big point guard like this is, is you know great if he pans out uh i think the last guy he offered this early was kendall i think kendall signed when he was a sophomore as well uh, or at least committed when he was a sophomore i don't know if they can technically sign but uh so hopefully you know it's good things um hopefully kid keeps working hard and it pans out it's so hard to to project out you know Oh yeah, he's six five and he's dominating. Well, yeah, a lot of six five point guards are going to dominate in high school, and I haven't seen any of his mixtapes yet. I don't know, you know, what the highlights look like, or I don't know what kind of competition he's playing against. But uh, I do trust Roy uh, a lot more than I trust me. He's out there and sees these guys and all that stuff, of course, uh, and I'm not. <laughs> so uh, good commitment, good pickup for the Tar Heels. Hopefully, you know, again, this investigation stuff goes away each year and, uh, you know, whatever penalties are, there are penalties, and then we can kind of get back to recruiting more likely not to. Not that I'm not excited for this kid to be a Tar Heel by any means. It's just, uh, yeah, we're used to getting those top classes, getting those top guys, especially in the class of, or in the state of North Carolina. And this class for next year has kind of left a bitter taste in my mouth with Harry Giles. Um and what bam and and i know i'm missing some other guys out of north carolina but uh that we that we missed on so yeah i'd like to get back to there uh other than that i think that covers pretty much everything i was going to talk about it's uh yeah it's a great day a great time to be a tar heel we gotta remember that until next time go heels